Okay, you can turn in your Bible tonight to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. There's something that separates Christianity from the other cults out there, and it is the fact that, uh, well, there's a lot of things, but the main thing is the fact that our Bible gives very accurate predictions about the future. Okay? A God that could write a book would certainly know what's going to happen in the future. And these man-made books of other religions, the Koran and the, all the other scriptures, the holy scriptures of other cults out there, they can't tell the future Amen. because they're written by men, not by God. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place uh, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. Sorry to the Catholic Church. <laughs> they say that the Pope is the only one that can interpret Scripture. Wrong. If you have the Holy Ghost within you, He can teach you the truth. Amen. Verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. God's Holy Spirit spoke through the men who wrote this book. And it was quite a collection of men. When you actually look at who wrote the Bible, what a collection of men, you know. Uh, amazing. Kings, fishermen, murderers, adulterers. <laughs> amazing. It's an amazing book that we have. But notice there in verse 19, it says, uh, we have more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. Take heed to what? The more sure word of prophecy. There are things that should be happening in the future and, and things that happen in our day-to-day -day lives that we can say, hey, this is Bible prophecy being revealed. And we live in a very unique time where prophecies are being revealed almost on a daily basis. Our Bible, our King James Bible is being confirmed. But notice there too it says, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Is this world a dark place? Yeah. yeah. You know, the pastor was saying this morning, we are the light of the world, and this world is a dark place, you know. So uh, it's kind of interesting, too. It says there about taking heed. And when the disciples in Matthew chapter 24, they came to Jesus and they said, What are the signs of thy coming and of the end of the world? And what did Jesus say? He said, Take heed that no man deceive you, you know. Take heed. That means you're to be taking heed you're to be noticing things that are happening in the world around you and filtering it through the bible Amen. and saying what's going on according to scripture don't follow the news media they aren't going to tell you the truth you know they're going to try and deceive you. they're you know the news media is saying things are getting better a lot of times no sorry it's not turn over to first thessalonians chapter five we're going to see about the thing of light versus darkness 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 4 and read down through verse 11. It says here, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Um, ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, there you have the rapture, the living Christians, and the dead Christians, wake or sleep. We should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. It amazes me how Christians today, and I've spoken about this before, how Christians today can think that we're going to go through God's wrath and the tribulation. And somehow that's something you can feel comfortable with. That's not a comfort. That's a terror. If I believed I was going to face God's wrath for seven years, and you read, read the book of Revelation sometime, to think about going through that time, that'd be horrible. 
I would have to question my God's love for me if I knew I was going to go through that. But I know I'm not going to. Okay, the Bible clearly uh, says the Christians are going to be leaving before that time. Amen. But um, it's kind of interesting there. You see the contrast be between the saved, they are the light, and those that are lost, they are in darkness. They don't know what's going on. And a lot of people out there, they, they you know, we as Christians, we see things happening and, un and unfolding on the world scene. And we say, wow, Jesus is coming soon. You know, this is what the Bible said was going to happen. And the lost just, you know, a lot of people just don't care. You know, and, and in fact, a lot of people think that you are crazy if you talk about the return of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, it's incredible. Um, Ephesians chapter 5. Turn there next. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. We're going to see again the thing of light versus darkness. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 says here, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Now, it's, you know, as I was saying earlier there, you know, as Christians, we are supposed to look for things that are happening in this world and we're supposed to reprove them. But it's interesting that one of the books in your Bible, actually the last book, is called Revelation. Now, it's interesting there because God revealed future events to John. But as time goes by, we ourselves are going to see more and more of this stuff being revealed. Okay? And I'm going to talk about some of that. This, this past week, I saw a couple stories on the Internet, and I printed them out. I'm going to be talking about that. Uh, just how close we are getting to the Antichrist system, the Mark of the Beast system you know, coming into play here. It's, it's just a, amazing some of the things that are happening. Uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 26 says, Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. Things that are written about in this Bible are going to come to pass. Yes, I heard somebody say the one time that prophecy, Bible prophecy is pre-recorded history. Mm -hmm. I thought that was so good. You know, the history books don't have this stuff in it yet, but they will one day. You know, if there are any books left at the end of the tribulation, I don't know. But uh, turn to Revelation chapter 13. As I said, we're going to talk about a little bit about the mark of the beast here tonight. And, uh, you know, this stuff can be a little bit scary at times. But as Christians, we have to understand that we're not going to be going through this. That's what the comfort was there in First Thessalonians chapter 5. Um, but the system is there. And I think as Christians, we have a a duty to reprove some of this stuff and to say I'm not going to take part in that because that's leading towards the mark of the beast because if we just say oh it's no problem you know I'll, I'll go along with this system that's coming in eh, there's going to be lost people that are going to hear that and I, I have a video we, we watched a video this past week uh, an older one of mine I'd forgotten some of this stuff some of the big prophecy teachers I think Hal Lindsey and, and Chuck Missler and they were both saying that the implantable microchips are not going to be part of the mark of the beast. And I'm thinking, what? You know? And I mean, we have to be very careful. Even though we're not going to go through it as Christians, we have to be careful not to go along with it. And we're going to look at some things here that are developing. But uh, first, we're going to look at what the mark of the beast is and what it is not. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 says here, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Let me stop there for a minute. The King James Bible is the only Bible that I'm aware of, and I have quite a few of them in my collection. It's the only one that I'm aware of that says in. All the others say on or upon. Yeah. A Bible that's written 400 plus years ago, and it says in. And up until a couple of years ago, I have a lot of commentaries and things too, and they say, 
well, this is obviously a mistranslation because how could you have a cashless system or something that's in the hand? Well, before microchips came out, yeah, you'd think that. But now that there are implantable microchips, it's very possible to have it in the hand or in the forehead. Uh, verse 17, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Six, six, six. Okay? And a lot of people, you know, without getting ahead of myself, that used to be a very scary thing. Even lost people would kind of, you know, there was some fear there. And now people are actually mocking it a lot of times, which we'll see that in just a little bit. But uh, Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, you say, what happens if you take the mark of the beast in this time period? Revelation 14, verse 9 says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Okay, a couple points I want to make there quick. First of all, notice that it's two things, worshiping the beast and taking the mark. Okay, it's going to be a system that's tied together. All right, that's important. You'll remember that later. But notice in this passage here, it says any man. But back in Revelation 13, it said that this thing is going to be required if you want to buy or sell. God is actually going to place such a standard in this time period, this tribulation time period, that if you want to be saved, you won't be able to go and buy or sell. That means no job, no going to the grocery store. Amen. What a terrible thing to go into that time period. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be such a serious thing in God's sight that he's going to say, you can't take that mark. And, you know, read back in Revelation chapter 6, there are people being beheaded for the word of God, mm -hmm. you know, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. But... Uh, Turn to Revelation chapter 20. I'm going to show you another thing here. Now, I do believe that the implantable microchip, and I'm going to show you a little bit about that in a minute here. I do believe that that's part of the system, but also I do believe that there will be a visible mark upon the forehead. And you see it here in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. It says here, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus... Said about Revelation 6, there I mentioned earlier, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So you do see that there is also a visible mark. And it says there, or, so I don't know exactly how the system's going to work out, but the point is it's in the right hand or forehead or upon the forehead is the way the Bible spells it out. And I'm going to tell you right now, there are technologies for both available right now. And I'm going to show you some of that here as we continue. Um, first of all, I have here something that's rather interesting, and fortunately, praise the Lord, and this is something I, I have to mention. Man's plans are oftentimes very bad, but remember they have to get God's permission before they can carry it out. So they'll come out with things and it's like, oh boy, this really sounds bad. Eh, don't worry about it. If God doesn't want it to happen, it's not going to happen. You know, Jesus Christ is, runs all of creation. By him, all things consist, the Bible says. So, you know, don't worry about some of this stuff. But here is an article, uh, Snopes.com. Uh, where's the thing here? Not sure what the date is on this. But um, they said here, that the original draft of Obamacare had it in it that everybody was supposed to be implanted with microchips by March 23rd of 2013. Wow. That was what was originally in the Obamacare bill. And it has the subsections and everything right here, if you want to see it. I'm not going to spend time reading all of it, but it goes into it that there's to be 
a registry of all Americans, and it's to be carried out with implantable devices. And this one guy had a, had a video linked up, and they're showing people with the little, it looks like a grain of rice, a little chip. And they're saying, you know, and it's, it's, they're smiling, you know, and isn't this wonderful that these elderly people have it now, and this little child has it now, and because you don't have to worry about him being kidnapped and, you know, all this stuff. I mean, they're, they're promoting the thing. It's just incredible. But fortunately, well, the Obamacare thing is still with us. We <laughs> still have that to deal with. But fortunately, that provision was knocked out. So praise the Lord for that. But the fact is, there are politicians that put that thing in there. They want it to be implemented, to microchip the entire population. And they wanted it by 2013, March 23rd of 2013. It's incredible. And I think it was God's protection upon us that that thing got knocked down. Amen. Praise the Lord for it. The second one, and this, this is, I could have printed out a lot of articles on this, but here we have a nightclub in Florida that they're giving people RFID tags. You don't have to show ID or anything. You just walk through the scanner. It scans who you are. And I'm going to show you something here which is interesting. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing here, but it says um, when you walk through it, it says, first, we text you asking if we can check you in on Facebook. Uh, Push's owner and operator, Matt Donahue, explains. We like to ask beforehand, beforehand because we don't want to be too invasive. Maybe be people don't want others to know exactly where they are, he laughs. But if they agree, we check them in on Facebook. Next, as an incentive for, incentive for participating, we send another text, which you can show to the bartender for a free drink. And there are, there are nightclubs in the UK where they're actually getting them implanted. It's not a little tag that you get. It's actually a chip. I've seen pictures of it. And they walk right through the scanner. You know, there's the slow line where you have to go through and show your ID, or you can go through the fast one and have your microchip. And you go in there and they give you free drinks and all kinds of neat stuff, you know. It's incredible. And, you know, I, I can't get into a whole lot of this thing in this because you know, I don't have a whole lot of time here, but, you know, these things, these chips, they can monitor your body, your, your heart rate, your temperature, your sugar level, your, you know, blood pressure, everything. They can follow you around. They can type it into the computer, and they can watch exactly where you're going with these things. I mean, we had, you know, reading the Mark of the Beast type of stuff, you think, well, that's bad, buying and selling and things, but it goes far beyond that, yeah, exactly. the technology. It is going to be a nightmare, you know. And you say, well, why would God allow that to happen? Well, it's going to happen on a Christ-rejecting world, okay? And part of the reason for it is for, it's the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? It's for the Jews. It's for the nation of Israel because they require signs to prove things. So God's going to give them seven years of signs where they won't be able to deny his existence after that. Um, <clears throat> Now, the next thing here I want to talk about is this thing of, it said there, it links to Facebook. Now, this is, this is the thing I get all the time on the Internet. Are you on Facebook? Are you on Facebook? I want to friend you on Facebook, all this stuff. Well, there are reasons I'm not on Facebook. I'm going to cover those right now. Uh, real quick here, read a little bit. Um, <laughs> well, I don't want to, I got a, quite a few articles. <laughs> I can't read everything. But... Uh, <laughs> It says here, are you one of the tens of millions of Facebook users who don't think you can live without it? If you value your, your privacy in a high-tech society in which 24-7 surveillance is a virtual reality, especially online, you might want to reassess just how important the site really is to you. According to a recent report by the Atlantic Wire, Facebook has inked a partnership with the firm Data Logics in an attempt to give advertisers more information about the effectiveness, effectiveness and reach of their ads. You can do this anywhere online. Go online and go on to Google and type in uh, American-made boots, we'll say. And then go on to another website, you'll see ads popping up for American-made boots. Why? Because they're tracking and tracing everything that you do online. I, my website's not that big of a website, it's just a cheap little thing. But I can go on there and I can see Everything that people have done on my website, I can tell the, the resolution of their computer screen. I can tell what kind of operating system they have. I can drive to their house 
it zooms right in to the house where they are and I can tell them exactly what they did on my website. And that's with my little low tech website, okay? It's, the internet is, is, there are some good things to it, but I'll tell you what, everything you do on there is being tracked. Yes, sir. You know, it's pretty dangerous. Okay, here's another article. This is the New Zealand Herald. Uh, Facebook has tens of millions of users worldwide. It's worth billions of dollars, and if internet sources are to be, are to be believed, was started by the CIA. And then it goes on to talk about some stuff here, but it says here, Facebook's first round of venture capital funding, $500,000, came from former PayPal CEO Peter Thiel, author of Multicultural multi Tome, The Diversity Myth. He is also on the board of radical conservative group Vanguard PAC. I'm not even sure what that is. The second round of funding into Facebook, $12.7 million, came from the venture capital firm Assel partners and it goes into saying a bunch of things here other connections but uh, basically he is the CEO of Q Intel a venture capital firm established by the CIA so and you can I mean there there's again documentation I can't cover everything but the Department of Defense and the CIA both financed Facebook a couple other things here here's another article epictimes.com Facebook drops face recognition in Europe amid privacy concerns. You go onto Facebook's website, they have computer technology that databases your face and actually measures the distance between your cheekbones, between your eyes, your nose to your mouth. It actually databases it. And, um, and they admit it. That's the amazing thing. Oh, it's not in this one. Um, but I mean, they've been doing this since 2009. The Europeans said, we don't want this technology being used. And so Facebook pulled the technology from the European customers, but not in America. In America, you put your pictures on there, they are the exclusive right of Facebook. And they database it. Um, here's another one. Uh, Marine kidnapped over Facebook posts. <laughs> this is incredible. In his first public comments since being kidnapped by authorities over political posts on Facebook, former Marine Brandon Robb uh, tells John Whitehead of the Rutherford Institute that he is scared for his country. Uh, again, I'm not going to read all this stuff here. On August 16th of this year, um, he wrote some different things on Facebook about the government. Nothing terroristic or, you know, threatening anybody's life. He just said he's dissatisfied. One of the things that he wrote is he said, Robb said that, Rob said the quote was a metaphor adding, the truth is very powerful and it has the ability to cut. Truth is not always nice. Pointing out that Jesus would have probably also been investigated as a terrorist for encouraging his followers to sell their cloak and buy a sword. That was one of the things that was cited in the report. And the Secret Service came and took him to a uh, me mental ward under, for psychiatric evaluation. And I have seen story after story after story People are on Facebook and they say something, and next thing you know, police are showing up. You know, that thing is being monitored all the time. And the CIA, by the way, has ads on Facebook to recruit people for clandestine operations. I mean, it's you can go on there and check it out. If you don't believe me, it's it's incredible. This is interesting here. The the uh, Daily Mail in the UK, and this this is you know big publications over there. They say here, is not joining Facebook a sign you're a psychopath? Some employers and psychologists say staying away from social media is suspicious. And then they go into a whole thing saying that if you don't have a Facebook account, then something might be wrong with you. You know, I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> it says here, this is interesting. It says the tech news site slash dot summed up Dear Tag Spiegel's story about social networking as, quote, not having a Facebook account could be the first thought, sign that you are a mass murderer. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I won't ask how many mass murderers there are here tonight. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's incredible. And see, I'm going to give you a little theory that I have here in just a minute. But um, this story here really kind of made me go, oh, boy. This was um, on the main page of my email account that I use. Uh, it talks about there was an airline executive's urge airport security overhaul. 
And uh, it says here, Tony Tyler, Director General of the CEO of International Air Transport Association. And he says a bunch of things here, but he says, uh, he predicted that by 2020, governments will be using a checkpoint of the future where passengers can race through without stopping, removing clothing or taking liquids and laptops out of bags. And uh, he goes on to say basically, uh, where is it here? If you are willing to share a little more information, then you can have a much better experience. Is what he said. So in other words, you allow the government to intrude more into your life and get signed up for their system. What did we just read? You know, he requires all, both small and great, free and bond, you know. And you sign up for the system, well, you just walk on through. Everything's fine, you know. It's great for you. But if you want to say, oh, I, I, you know, it's private, I don't want that being released, oh, well, you know, that's suspicious. See, this thing's all heading for what I believe is very soon fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Amen. Two other things here, quick. Uh, this is another thing that's very interesting. I'm sure you've all seen this. I have the, there's some numbers here too on it, but you have the barcode. Everybody's seen that, right? At the grocery store. What a lot of people don't realize is that the two thin lines on the ends and the two thin lines in the middle and the two thin lines there is 666. Six, six. That's the, the two thin lines are the computer designation six. Interesting. Now, you know, people say, I've heard people, you know, oh, you're taking the mark of the beast if you, you know, no. The beast hasn't showed up yet, okay? You're not going to be damned for, for buying things with a barcode on it yet. But very interesting here, the last, I'm not even sure, maybe a year or two now, these things are starting to be replaced by a new symbol that you're starting to see on everything. Anybody ever seen one of these? This is called a QR code. Don't ask me what Q and R means because I don't know. But the point is this is a QR code. And I did a little bit of research into this thing and actually put a video out on YouTube about it. And I actually had a guy from Japan send me a technical manual for this whole thing. And he underlined some things and said, check this out. And it's very interesting. These things here, if you've ever been at the grocery store and they take the thing with that on it and they're going over the scanner or they're doing the thing and it doesn't always work. Why? Well because if it's curved a little bit it won't work. These things work on any surface and it can be curved. Now the interesting thing is there are tattoo parlors that are already tattooing these things onto people and you can scan it with an iPhone and it takes you to their Facebook page. Wow. It's amazing. Say, what's going on? Well, I believe that the future system is going to be, maybe not Facebook per se, but it's going to be a social network where people go and their information is all laid out there in the open. And this, more than likely, maybe it'll be something different, but this is the technology right here. That thing could be the mark upon their forehead. And it's right here. And it, this thing, I mean, these things are showing up everywhere. It's amazing. I mean, I get catalogs. And they, they'll have these things in the catalog and say, if you want to buy this product, scan it with your phone and you'll buy it instantly. It's amazing. You know? We are getting very, very close to this whole thing happening. To Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Two more places in Scripture here, quick. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Say, so what can a Christian do about it? What should be our reaction as Christians to these things? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Now, if you start looking at some of this stuff and you start feeling a little bit afraid, this is the verse you go to. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. You know one of the things that's a big temptation when you see a lot of this stuff starting to come to pass? Keep your mouth shut. I don't want them to discover that I'm, I'm a Christian. You know, I, better, I better kind of go into hiding or something. Well, I don't believe that that time is yet for Christians in America. I know there are Christians in China and some other places where it's really bad. You know, some of the Islamic nations, 
Pakistan and things like that, you know, go out street preach over there, you're <laughs> not going to be alive 24 hours later. There are some places where you have to hide, don't get me wrong. But right now in America, there's still, the doors of the gospel, I believe, are still open. Okay, right now we should be preaching the gospel and realizing that Bible prophecy is coming to pass very quickly. We might not have much longer to go. And if you have lost relatives or lost co-workers or whatever, make sure you witness to them. Okay, it's not your responsibility to save them. That's up to the Lord. Amen. Your responsibility is just to witness to them. What they do with it from there, they'll have to stand before the Lord and answer for that. Okay, Matthew chapter 18, verse 7. Matthew chapter 18, verse 7 says, Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. The offenses are going to happen. The mark of the beast system is going to come in, but don't help it come in. As Christians, there are things I just am not going to do. You know, to the people out online that say, Were you going to join Facebook? No, I'm not going to join Facebook. People say, are you going to go through the self-checkout lines where the, there's no cash register and you can go through and scan your card and stuff? No, I'm not going to do that. You know, I realize you can't totally get away from the system that's being created. I understand that. You know, you're not going to go to hell if you have a Facebook account or something like that. But as for me, I'm going to try to avoid as much of this stuff as I can. And if they say, I want you to show your card or scan, I'm going to say, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that. Why? Well, because the Bible prophesies that the mark of the beast system is coming, and I believe this is in preparation for it. We as Christians have a responsibility to stand against some of this stuff. Okay? Just a little challenge there tonight. One other thing I want to cover here, which has been brought up, I've actually heard a couple times now. Um, <clears throat> just another thing, because we're right here. Verse 8 there. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee, for it is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Now, I know Pastor, you brought the thing up the one time about, you know, maybe this is a, a thing for the future of tribulation saint if they have a, or not tribulation saint, somebody in the tribulation, if they get the mark, that they'd be better off cutting their hand off so they don't go to hell. Well, when you look at it in Revelation, it says, worship the beast and take the mark. So it's a two-fold system there. And there you know, probably is also going to be the required mark upon the forehead, which, you know, <laughs> you're not going to be able to cut your head off and, you know, <laughs> not end up in hell. So just wanted to throw that thing in there. But, you know, things are really, really moving rapidly. I mean, as we get closer to the rapture, you know, it's like I heard somebody say the one time, if you're driving across the country and say you're heading to California and you see a road sign going from here and you see Ohio, well, that's not the sign for California, but you know, I'm closer to California, mm -hmm. you know. And as signs come for the tribulation, we're getting closer to the rapture, okay? Um, you know, the rapture is going to be a very quick, instantaneous thing. It's not going to be like, oh, I, you know, it's going to happen tomorrow and... You know, we can see this thing. It's going to be quick. Amen. And we're not going to have time to witness to somebody. We're not going to have time to get something cleaned up. You know, there again, what are the lost going to find in your house when the rapture happens? Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to be in there. And that's been a challenge to me. I mean, I different times I had people give me secular movies. You know, I call them Hollywood movies. I don't want them things in my house. Amen. Why? Because somebody's going to come in there and search the house after I'm gone, you know? So just a little challenge there tonight. Um, I guess we'll close here with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I, I do thank you for your word. I thank you for the more sure word of prophecy. And um, it's, it's uh, difficult to live down here sometimes and, and see all the, all the evil that's coming and and I know a lot of people are starting to falter and, and starting to lose faith that you're going to be coming and taking us out of here. But I pray for everyone here tonight and everybody listening to this message that they would not 
uh, give in and, and run away in fear, that, that they would not have a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind, and that they would continue working for you right up until the time you take us out of here. So help us all to go out this week and, and look for opportunities, Lord, to witness for you and not to be part of the system and uh, go along with it. And I just pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.